I think the big one in college basketball, and you can you can correct me if I'm wrong, is Johnny Juzang coming yes. back um, mm-hmm. because there there was a world. He he was a very interesting NBA prospect to begin with because I think if you watch the NCAA tournament, you say to yourself, "How is this guy not a lottery pick?" Given that he's uh, he's making everything. Is that not the point of the game, Tate? Johnny Juzang <laughs> is making shots. You have to make shots to win any level this basketball. This man does not miss, yes. He does not miss. He was he was taking and making the most insane shots. It was an all-time heater. It was an NCAA tournament run, the likes of which I'm not going to say we've never seen, but we rarely see. The, and, and the ones that um, come to mind – when, when you try to stack him up against other people, they come to mind because they're so memorable. When you think of Carson Edwards or, or Kimball Walker, or in, insert whoever your favorite NCAA tournament And if you run. don't watch college basketball, you'd probably say Steph Curry in St- that yeah. run. Yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. That's um, the one that everyone that never watched college basketball was like, oh man, I remember Steph Curry. You're like, I remember Dude. Steph. I remember <laughs> Steph using that run to catapult himself into the draft that year. And you're like, no, 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 he came back. And yeah, their heads they're like, exploded. Wait, what? Like, what? <laughs> I can't be right. <laughs> remember when Steph made the final four? No, it never happened. Yeah, and then yeah, did he made the final four and then he went to the draft, right? Mm-hmm. No, 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 nope. no, he did nope. not. <laughs> no. Nope. Um, but Juzang goes on his insane run, Tate. And uh, like I said, if you're if you're watching every step of the way, you you might say to yourself, this guy's got to be a lottery pick. I mean, like, mm-hmm. what else? What else do you want out of a, a player? But then there was the part that was like part of part of what makes it so impressive is how many tough shots he was making and i guess maybe that would give you pause if you're evaluating his game at the next level you're like why exactly is every jump shot johnny juzang's taking at the college level does he have a hand in his face yes yeah, so difficult why, yes. why can this man not create separation mm-hmm. and uh that became as i thought about where he might end up in the draft that became my big question mark is like i think that might actually matter at some point that's going to have to matter, right? Like what? Cause I don't know, I guess like th- this is, this is an absolutely horrible comparison and I'm not comparing the two of them as a player, but um, this is where my mind immediately went is kind of Jimmer. Yeah. Forget. Yeah. Like Jimmer in college, you're like, the dude doesn't miss. He can make shots from anywhere. What, how, what, what else do you want? And then he gets to the NBA and just gets swallowed alive. by the <laughs> You're like, Oh, you're like, oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> So anyway, I didn't know I didn't know what Juzang was going to do. I think most of us didn't. And the fact that he's coming back, uh, what what kind of pro he will be? Who the hell knows? We can figure that out next year. The fact is, he's coming back, and we know that he's an awesome college basketball player. And I'm very excited about that. I was sent a big board uh, from a team that had their top 60 prospects. This is about two weeks ago, and they had Johnny Juzang as number 49 on that list. Wow! And I thought, and I thought that was, I uh, you know, that to me said, well. I assume that Johnny Juzang is going to come back because if an NBA team has this list and they have him here, you know, he obviously has the people that are going to give him that same feedback. He's going to come back. But as the deadline was creeping up, Titus, as you know, the deadline was at 11 o'clock p.m. And at 1050, Johnny Juzang was still waiting in the waters. As Mm. we know, they're testing the water. So he's swimming. He's swimming around. He's having a good time. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, we're going to lose Johnny Juzang. We're going to lose the Pac-12 update. We're going to lose, you know, this... (laughs) This whole, you know, uh, you know, spurt of, of energy that's coming out of West Coast basketball, and at ten fifty two, Johnny Juzang sent in, "I'm back." Um, <laughs> he and, sent the facts in. He sent the facts <laughs> in, and and the world. I mean, I know for me, I just started smiling because I. T- this is going to be a hot take, but I think that Johnny Juzang is the second most important slash famous player in the city of Los Angeles. Obviously, LeBron James <laughs> has has number one. <laughs> He's number one, but I think number two is solidly Johnny Juzang, and I'm telling you, that Final Four run, it it woke back, you know, the powers that be in the UCLA world. It woke up Baron Davis. It woke up Earl Watson. It woke up, you know, the king of Twitter, Josiah Johnson. Like, all the UCLA people, they they were ready to roll after this Final Four run, but they needed Johnny to come back because Johnny was the face of this team. Yes, the rest of the nucleus was coming back. Yes, they got a good transfer. They got a center that's coming in from Rutgers that's going to help Johnson. Yeah, Miles Johnson on the front line so the pieces that were were, were all there Peyton Watson the five-star who came on Titus and Tate and committed uh, to mm-hmm. UCLA is coming in number one He's recruit pl- in the country yeah number one recruit in the country according, according to Titus and Tate <laughs> exactly uh, and also playing right now in Latvia for the under 19 team you know beating Korea South Korea by you know uh, 85 points so he's he's gonna be he's gonna I be do a, love those by the way I love those graphics oh. that you follow USA basketball they're like <laughs> 
<laughs> Our U19 team just won by 97 points. You're like, I'm like, what? please, please show me the highlights. Like, I don't even understand this happens. Um, but all that's to say, like, UCLA, like, it, it, it was all setting up for this great turn uh, for the whole entire program. Jordan Brand is coming in, like you said, at yep. the top of the show. So... It just it just needed Johnny. He was the last puzzle piece. And as soon as he decided to come back, I'm talking endorsement deals. I think Russell Westbrook Nissan needs to get in on this. You know, they're going to give him an endorsement deal. Um, Johnny is the face of Los Angeles basketball outside of LeBron James. And uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty fired up about it because you and I need this. Uh, West Coast basketball needs this. And the Pac-12 update deserved this. So thank you, Johnny Juzang. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defend you because when it came out of your mouth, I thought that's one of the dumber things you've said on the show. And that's I, saying something. I'm that's standing, saying I'm, something. I'm standing by it. I'm not but afraid. No, I'll, I'll defend you in, uh, because I thought about it more. Like what, uh, to, to the city of Los Angeles. Yes. Is, is Johnny Jesus? He's obviously not more famous than Kawhi Leonard and Paul George and Anthony Davis, but does he matter more to them? Yes. No. Like the, the city like, of Los Angeles is not rallying around Paul George or Anthony Davis. The, you're not going to barber shops and hearing people talk about how much they love Anthony Davis. Or no, like, they yeah. hate him. They want to trade him for <laughs> Dave Leonard. <laughs> right, right. So I'll, I'll give that. To, I'll say this much: if you're talking head coaches, and we we've touched on this before, who runs uh, the city of Los Angeles in terms of head coaches? Because I don't think I don't think people love Dave Roberts, do they? Like they should. No. No, no, I think I think they think that the Dodgers win in spite of him, not because of him. Yeah, I think, and, and uh, Dave Roberts is a Boston Red Sox guy because you know the, the, the yes. you know like what he did in the Yankees series. So like I feel like he has that cachet behind him, not Frank, really the Dodger cachet. Frank Vogel sure as hell is not the guy. No, uh, that, that's 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 Frank Vogel wins the uh, the the twenty twenty title, and I just picture the guy that you're not that guy, pal. I picture yeah. him going up to Frank as Frank Vogel's like this city is mine. I picture yeah. that guy. Like, Phil, no, for Phil Frank, Handy, you're not that guy. the assistant coach. Phil Handy is more of the, like a, a face when you think of like the staff of the Los Angeles right. Lakers than Frank Vogel for sure. Right. And when no you're doubt. and when you're LeBron's coach, you're never you're always like a bargaining chip to le, or like an ace <laughs> up the sleeve, like some sort of maneuver is about to be played, where you know what I mean. Like you're, yes. you're you always got the target on your back in mm -hmm. some way to where you're, you're you not, were the fall guy. You were you're, you're the, fall guy. the fall guy. Yes. Ty Lu, I think it's getting closer, but to, to being like you know the the he's he's the best coach I would say in yes. Los Angeles, but he's coaches for the Clippers. Nobody cares about the Clippers in this city. Exactly. So. That's that he doesn't count. So what I'm saying is, uh, it's Mick Cronin. Mick Cronin's the guy. Uh, yes. It's not Andy Enfield because Andy Enfield purposely tries to live in the shadows and not. He doesn't want any media attention. He doesn't want anybody to even know he's the head coach at USC. Andy Enfield just says shh to the yes. media every time yes. they come around. So it's Mick Cronin City, and uh, I, I will by by proxy Johnny Juzang. Yes, UCLA's back. Is that's what we're saying? We're yeah. officially. I, I think Johnny Juzang coming back means UCLA is definitely back, and uh, Pat. Pac-12 basketball is back. Pac-12 dominated the in-state tournament. Um, there was a slight concern that the the residual of that, the inertia from that, was going to die out over the summer. That the mm -hmm. season was going to start next year, and everybody was going to forget that the Pac-12 had the best NCAA tournament and actually plays great basketball. Yep. Um, and I don't th I don't think you can do that anymore. I don't think you can can deny UCLA because. Uh, Gonzaga, by the way, for a lot of people, is going to be the number one team in the country entering the season. I, I expect them to be number one in the preseason poll. I think I would vote UCLA. I think mm. I would. I, either way, the two best teams in college basketball entering next season are almost certainly going to be West Coast teams, are they not? they got to be UCLA and Gonzaga. I know Kansas is going to be good. Villanova will be good. Yeah. Michigan fans are excited about their team. Um, but it's got to be UCLA and Gonzaga, right? Yeah, I was going to say, Gonzaga is the de facto number one, especially, you know, what they did last year, uh, what they were supposed to do. The title game, you know, for some Gonzaga fans, they say uh, they're going to come back and get redemption. I kind of believe in that story arc, even though, um, you know, obviously you're going to miss Kispert, but, you know, you get Chet Holmgren, who's also playing on that under-19 team that's beating South Korea by 80 points. You believe in um, the, the 81-82 arc with Dean Smith? I, with, I mean, with Mark Fu, right? Or, like that's or, the six, or the 16 17 arc, you know, with the North Carolina team, okay. or like what Virginia did. Like, I just believe in redemption, especially for the nucleus of guys to come back. And when Drew Timmy comes back, 
that that is enough of that team. Um, Mark Few obviously has the DNA of that program, right? Um, so I, I think Gonzaga is going to get the tip of the cap to be number one. But I think if you're if you're like Andy Katz and you're like us and you saw Johnny Juzang, you you believed in the Johnny Magic. Um, I think I think you should go by Johnny Basketball. You know, just take that over. You know. <laughs> Like, if you saw Johnny Basketball a star in the NCAA tournament, there's no way that when he announces, you just don't get hyped up and say they're the number one team in the country. I know Andy Katz already bumped them up in his, you know, top 36, his, his power 36 for the offseason. So I think a lot of, you know, journalists in the world of college basketball are going to follow suit. I think that'll be good for Gonzaga, to be honest with you. If you're Gonzaga, yeah. you, you don't, don't want to be, be yeah, you don't you want to be, be number, number one. one. Yeah, yeah. You, you'd rather be number two and have people, you know, the, the nobody believes in us team, as they like to say in the business uh you want to be that group and i think you know this is what ucla could do and if you're ucla and you're ranked preseason number one like hang the banner you know that, yes. that's a start yes. that's a start yes. hang the banner hang hang the banner absolutely just hang the hang the <laughs> call your shot just hang the national championship banner right now hang the yes. 2022 yes. national pull championship pull san diego banner. state just start <laughs> hanging <laughs> banners <laughs> just hanging out I, i'm with you i don't think gonzaga should want to be number one i think uh if you're a gonzaga fan and you hear me say i want you silly to be number one i think you should be like that's fine I, yeah I, I think last year you get upset about that every year before last year you get upset about that if you believe that you have the best team and and the media doesn't see it the way you see it all that yeah i, I think if you're a gonzaga fan you're we don't care rank us 23rd we don't care what we're trying mm -hmm. to do is we, we want to win one game as it turns out we don't care about winning all the other games we did yeah. that last year we won every game but one last year <laughs> this year all we care about is winning uh the national title um yeah I, I i all all jokes aside about like us being in la and and hopping on the ucla bandwagon hardcore and obviously we're gonna push peyton watts into the moon yes. next season uh, yes. that's just be prepared for that folks um all of that aside I, it is cool like it is it is great for college basketball to have a guy like Johnny Juzang to, to have an awesome NCAA tournament and come back. It's obviously great for UCLA to be good uh, for a million different reasons. Number one, they've won the most national titles, obviously, but number two, it's a West Coast representation, um, which which does matter. And, and I think that's that's exciting to have two teams on the West Coast. They're going to be so good next year. And, and um, yeah, and, and last year, that was kind of the thing last year was like even, even last year we were talking about it a lot, like the Pac-12 update, uh, you know, the Pac-12 wasn't awesome throughout the regular season, but Gonzaga was all, and, and as the NCAA tournament started progressing, we, we noticed the Pac-12, we noticed that all the teams basically east of the Mississippi River sucked ass, yep. and it became like, if not the Pac-12, it was the middle of the country. Um, mm -hmm. And that's great for college basketball because, you know, most of the schools are on the East Coast and we understand that, but we want this to be a true national championship tape. We don't want to yeah. be college football where it's like, who's the best SEC team? Here, <laughs> yeah, take the title. <laughs> yeah we, we don't want regional championships. We want no. national championships. And I think, you know, that is a good spot to be in. And, and USC, they get Isaiah Mobley back. Obviously, Evan mm -hmm. Mobley is going to be a top five pick, so he's going to stay in the draft, but his brother comes back. So they're going to be formidable at some level. Oregon's always going to be formidable at some level. Arizona, I'm excited to see what the new era post yep. Sean Miller looks like. I think that's going to be very interesting. Obviously going to have some Gonzaga DNA there. So in general, Marcus the Bagley's back to Arizona Market, State, by the way. Robert, can we announced. talk about Robert Sachs? I mean, because this was yes. another. I mean, Marcus Bagley, like I, I got that top 60 list. Marcus Bagley, I think, was ahead of Johnny Juzang. I, I would have to look at it, but I'm pretty sure he was ahead of like 44, 45, something like that. So when he decided to come back, uh, he made an announcement that he was going to come back to college basketball, but he was going to enter the transfer portal. Yep. And then not some two hours later, Robert Sachs, a.k.a. Bobby Hurley, said, not so fast. You're coming back here. Mm -hmm. You're going to play for me again because you only played in 11 games last year. So Marcus Bagley, Bobby Hurley, uh, Arizona State's definitely throwing their hat in the ring. We, we were very disappointed last year, obviously, but... The, the Pac-12 is back. That's all we have to say. Uh, Bobby Sachs, or Robert Sachs, I'm sorry, he needed this <laughs> badly because uh, Remy Martin transferred to Kansas. Alonzo yep. Verge transferred to Nebraska. Um, the, the, the empire was semi-crumbling. Insert yes. the name, image, likeness era. Mm -hmm. And he, he gets Marcus Bagley to flip. I am curious how much I, – I know you, you mentioned at the top, Hunter Dickinson, uh, who's, who's back in Michigan, had said that in, in his uh, – he, he makes his announcement. He's doing the rounds with the interviews, and he mentioned that uh, name, image, likeness did play a part in him his coming back. I do wonder how much – um, that, that factored into a lot of the, these guys' decision. Obviously, draft stock is the number one thing, I think. Yes. You know, there's no one that was like a top top 10 pick that said, I want to come back because I could do 
car dealership commercials and <laughs> I, I think like I've, i want that more than i want to be a top 10 pick in the nba draft yeah um but it th I, th this is where to me moving forward name image likeness is going to have such a huge impact is is guys like johnny juzang and hunter dickinson and ej liddell who may or may not be drafted probably not in the first round um it's certainly not in the case of Dickinson and Liddell. I don't think they were ever going first round. But Johnny Juzang maybe was a fringe first round. Set. Who knows? Uh, you, you can Previously, you would look at this, Tate, and you would say, all right, so I'm going to put my name in the draft. Uh, if, if I don't get drafted, if I don't get on a team, whatever, whatever it takes, like I'm going to sign a professional contract somewhere. I'm going to start making money. I'm going to yep. sign with this agency that's going to float me some cash and I can buy a car and take care of my family and X, Y, Z. And even if I end up in Europe, I'm going to be making – Two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year, whatever it is, that's a ton of money to, to, from, from from where I grew up. Um, yep. for, for, it's a ton of money for anybody, really. Uh, so it might not be millions and millions of dollars that you think you'd, you'd get if you're a top ten <laughs> pick, but you're like, screw it, I have to do it. That's worst case scenario is I end up in Europe and I make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now with name, image, likeness, those guys don't have the choice of like weighing draft stock, for money. Does money go back to school, make a little money on the side? improve your draft stock and at the end of the day if, if you don't improve your draft stock you still end up in europe and you made some money along the way you know and i think i think that's what is is going to happen moving forward is we're going to see a lot of these french guys come back and i'm excited about that because it's great for our sport yeah and name image likeness is all about your brand you know that's what all these kids have been talking about since you know 2008 every every kid wants to build their own brand build their own brand you know and by coming back to school in some of these cases like an ej liddell or johnny juzang or hunter dickinson you've you've garnered so much you know favor from those fans from that fan base you and yes. i talk about this all the time and when you have these michigan fans who are everywhere in the world and they have your back for life if you're hunter dickinson right like they they, they take so much pride in the fact that you wanted to come back and play even if you're saying hey i'm coming back because of name image likeness that played a big factor in it regardless they're going to take that as hey this kid wants to come back and play for our school yes. i love him i want to, i want to see him succeed i want to be a part of his success you're helping build your brand and you're also going to be able to make money on the side too so it's a win-win and i will say this if you are the overtime league or one of these other million leagues that got announced before nil passed yep. it's probably not the best time you you're know, shit you're, your you're, pants yes a hundred percent because like you said, like basketball for, for, for players now, and especially in the player empowerment era of the NBA, um, there, if you care about your brand, you no longer have, there's one way to get a built-in audience for yourself. Yes. And it's to play college basketball and get people that will follow you to the ends of the earth, no matter where you're playing. They will watch your games. They will buy your shoes. They will sell whatever the hell it is you're trying to sell them. Um, that's not necessarily the case in the NBA. Even when you when you get if Hunter Dickinson gets drafted in the second round by the Sacramento Kings and he's on a two way contract and he spends like six years going back and forth with the Kings and then gets traded to Oklahoma City and then bounces around in the NBA like has like four years and then like whatever he doesn't have a built in audience the, the people that are gonna buy it and like be all about Hunter Dickinson are gonna be the Michigan fans absolutely that, that they they will be that way forever and uh, yeah so that's. You're absolutely right. I think like that's something that should be pointed out, and 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 is absolutely not the case with all these overtime and what are the other ones? The G League overtime. Wasn't there a third one? <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Was. I think there was like a a, a co like a, not college bad, but like it was like they called it like the Super League or something like. But it yeah. wasn't the Super League, but it was something like in that same vein. But regardless i mean the g league already had their number one advocate jalen green who is you know some people have said maybe the number one pick he basically said he wished he played college basketball yeah so you get so you got one one of the most prominent figures in that space saying hey i wish i would have done that and also in the college basketball nil era you have a uh, masterpiece on I, i'm sure you saw this hersey miller who's going to play at an hbcu he signed a two million dollar deal now there's a lot of people that are saying there could be some chicanery behind this. How much mm -hmm. did Master P put up in this $2 million to get Hersey Who this cares? $2 million deal? Who cares? Regardless, Who cares? The, the headline speaks for itself, and every single other kid that sees that, that's 16, 17, 18 years old, and all the people around them, their AAU coaches, their family, they say, hey, th there's money to be made here by going to play college basketball, and there's an understanding that if you really do want to build your brand, you can go to these universities. They have these loyal fans that are going to love these schools forever, and they're in turn going to love you forever if yes. you go there.
Yes. <laughs> and if you leave on good terms, which you can now because you're not for, your hand isn't forced. And that was right. the problem beforehand. You had to leave early because your hand was forced. I think most most guys, when they think about building a brand, they, they believe that uh, I, th I think if you're a certain talent, uh, a certain caliber of talent, a LeBron James, a Kevin Durant, yes. a Zion Williamson, you don't necessarily need uh, a, a building. You, you, you can, a, a Kobe no matter, Bryant, a Kevin Kobe Garnett. Bryant. Yes. If you're of that ilk, you can build your brand a million different ways. It doesn't matter. You could, you could mm -hmm. be. It doesn't matter what NBA team you're drafted by. It doesn't matter if you go to college or not. You're going to be fine. And I think the mistake that a lot of guys make is assuming that because those guys can do it, I could also do it. And that is not the case. And for most guys. If if you want people to care about you, you have to you have to be smart about it and figure it out. And um, yeah, I, I think that's an easy way to do it: is go to college, get all these, inherit the fan base. Um, yes, yes. You in the same in the same way that colleges have been using you or using these players of this talent, use them. You know what I mean? Like to take yes. their fans, take take it away from them, and uh, and it's a win win in in most of these situations. You know, a great example of this is uh, a guy who was just on our show named Greg Oden, who mm. lives in Columbus, Ohio. Live was was born in Buffalo, moved to Indiana, spent like he he spent how he spent less than a calendar year in Columbus, Ohio, and yep. is like playing basketball. Went to Portland, ended up in Miami for a year or two, whatever it was. I, I forget. I think it was just a year, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I think it was just 2014, yeah. Spent some time in China playing. Anyway, point is, Greg Oden lives in Columbus, Ohio. And you know why he lives in Columbus, Ohio, Tate? Because he's beloved there. That is the one spot <laughs> yes. in this world that when Greg Oden walks out of his front he's door. He's the people's everyone, champ. Yes. Yeah. Everybody loves the guy. He's, he's like, dude, we, we remember what you did the one year uh, at Ohio State, and we love you for it. And... I don't think that that's like I, I think if you're smart about this, I then that's the the same thing is in effect for all of these guys. And yeah, I, I mean Tyler Hansbro. I mean Tyler Hansbro in North Carolina. I mean he plays four years. He beats Duke four times in Cameron Indoor. He goes and plays, you know, for the Pacers. Plays for the Hornets. Bounces around the NBA. Goes to China. You know, missed our show because he had to go play in China again. But that's right. He always stays in Chapel Hill, and that's and that's kind of. I mean, that is the story, and you can have that story, and uh, and you can make the most of it. And it's nice to have the safety net. I mean, why not have the safety net? Johnny Juzang has the safety net. Uh, Hunter Dickinson has the safety net. EJ Liddell back. Who, who else do we have to go through? Max A. Smith back at Oral Roberts. I'm mm. really upset. Uh, Kevin O'Banner is not not. He's, he's transferring. It's not my decision to be made. Like I always have to preface with that. Like I don't think the kid should make his decisions based on <laughs> on my own <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> Yeah. But man, that would have been so sick to have those two guys go back to War Roberts and just wreck shit together this year. Yeah, I was gonna say they're they're, they're a top twenty five team if he goes back to War Roberts. You would assume. Um, yeah. But the good news is that I've heard that Kevin O'Banner is visiting Chapel Hill. So uh, you oh, know, no. fingers fingers oh, crossed. No. That's, uh, that's no no, <laughs> dude. That is brutal for the show. I can't do that. I can't do it. <laughs> that's that's what I want. Like I, I, can't I honestly, you... I'm not gonna wood right now because I'm I don't want to jinx it. But yeah, I would. Um, I, I hope he listens to the show and he knows that, that that's the comedy of it all. <laughs> I can't have you with the rock hard o banner over there. <laughs> just, <laughs> just get excited. I, I, know. I, I just have that's to say, good. I love the Hubert Davis, right? The, the big knock on North Carolina when they lost Walker Kessler and Roy Williams, the big knock on him was that he didn't love stretch fours and stretch fives. You know, he, he's not going to have these big man shoot threes. And then Hubert Davis takes over the team. He's like, I'm getting Brady Manick, uh, a stretch yeah. four, stretch five. Uh, I'm going to get Dawson Garcia, a stretch four, stretch five. I'm going to get Kevin O'Banner. Banner, you know, who's going to be a stretch for like, I love it. Carolina basketball is totally different now. Yeah. Are you worried about that? Are you worried no, about identity I'm, crisis? I am, I am so excited, Titus. I honestly, I had, you know, I had told you this. I had turned into a football. We were a football school. So mm -hmm. I, I had, I had turned I wish, all. There's nothing I wish more than we had cameras on you at all times when the, the <laughs> Hubert Davis hire was announced and like that 48 hour window between Huber being hired and Tate yeah. like just wrestling with it and calling various people and how should I feel about mm. this and what mm. oh yeah <laughs> I mean so, you were in and out and back in back out <laughs> And then I finally got the call, and they said Jordan Jordan supports it, and I was like, okay. okay. I was like, all right, I, <laughs> all right. Let's everyone take it. Let's everyone take a deep breath here. Everything's okay. Um, and he's doing great on the recruiting trail. And I do. I mean, there, there could be some more uh, on the way. Like I said, O'Banner uh, may come visit North Carolina, or is expected to visit North Carolina. So, um, and and some more five stars in the future. <laughs> Thank you.
Hey there, thanks for watching Titus and Tate. For the full friend of the program experience, subscribe right below and come join us for all things college basketball. The action is heating up. Come join Titus and Tate.